everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Command Point Podcast. My name is Ryan. Today, Shane is with me, as per usual. Shane, how are you today? I am wonderful. How are you? I am excited, Shane. I am excited because finally we're doing a Death Watch deep dive. I'm excited for it. Yeah, it's uh, all it took was two years almost and an entire faction overhaul and it's it's finally happening all right so uh where to begin i i guess we should uh start off just by uh looking at their sub faction trait first so their sub faction tactic or i guess their sub faction trait is called mission tactics at the beginning of the first battle round choose a data sheet to be your kill team's priority target you can reroll wound rolls of one for attacks made by models in your kill team that target a model from the data sheet that is your kill team's priority target. In parentheses, so if you choose Tyranid Warrior, this ability would apply to attacks that targeted Tyranid Warriors and Tyranid Warrior Gunners. By itself, it's uh, it's it's okay. It's certainly not bad. Um, uh, reroll wound rolls of one against whatever you want, basically. Against some teams, this is going to be better than it is against others. Yeah, I was thinking uh, of, like, the Orc Boy Horde or, like, Tyranid Gaunt Spam. Not that you really see much of that anymore. Tau Drones? Mm, definitely. Interesting. Yes, yes. Um, and it's it's almost like, like when you look at something like Blood Angels for Astartes, this isn't quite as good as that, but no. you, like, you always get it, right? Yeah. Uh, so next up, the, the, the special thing that Death Watch gets that kind of separates them from uh, regular Astartes teams is uh, special issue ammunition. So I'm just going to read the text describing how that works. When this model fires an auto bolt rifle, bolt carbine, bolt pistol, bolt rifle, bolt gun, combi flamer, bolt gun profile only, combi melta, combi plasma, bolt gun profile only, heavy... <laughs> There's a lot of bolt weapons in Kill Team. Oh, my God. Heavy yeah. bolt pistol, stalker bolt rifle, stalker pattern bolt gun, or storm bolter. You can choose one kind of ammunition from the table below and apply the corresponding modifier. And they forgot the combi grab. It's just not in there. The interesting thing about it is, um, I guess it goes, it, we go into the next section that's titled Aquila uh, Kill Team. Uh, when you add an Adeptus Astartes model, excluding Scout, Stern Guard Veteran, or Tactical Marine to your command roster, uh, you can choose for it to have the Death Watch faction keyword instead of the Adeptus Astartes faction keyword. If you do so, it gains the Special Issue Ammunition ability, but you must add the relevant additional point values opposite to the model's total points if it is equipped with any of the ranged weapons opposite. And yeah. opposite... It shows a table for bolt pistols, combi flamers, combi multas, combi plasma. The cost of the model goes up by two points It is if it is armed with any of those weapons. And if you arm a model with a storm bolter, it is uh, four more points. There's a lot to note in that little Aquila Kill Team paragraph. The faction keyword is the is the most important thing. Yeah. Because the, uh, what... This basically says is if you don't have to switch from the Death Watch faction keyword to the Adeptus or vice versa, the Adeptus Astartes faction keyword to the Death Watch faction keyword, then you don't have to pay that tax, that table on the right side. So models like the Death Watch veteran data sheet, where they already have the Death Watch faction faction keyword, they don't have to pay that additional cost for special issue ammunition. Whereas a model that is normally like an intercessor or a Vanguard veteran or something that Adeptus Astartes get that is normally an Adeptus Astartes faction model that you can run in a Death Watch team, they have to pay that tax. And it's interesting that the the points per weapon or the, I guess like the points increase is only tied to those five weapons. I just found that to be kind of interesting after reading like everything above that, you know? So yeah. like I can take, I can take an intercessor and they get the special issue ammunition, but because they're not on this table, it's not going to cost me any more points, which I, I well, 
yeah, you don't have to pay a tax for the bolt rifle, but yeah. the unfortunate thing is they you don't have a choice in whether or not they're armed with a bolt pistol, so you still have to pay extra for the intercessor. Oh, yeah. I guess that was a bad example. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, like, yeah. I, I guess a better example would be if I took, like, a Vanguard sergeant and I took away um, his bolt pistol and instead I gave him the Relic Blade and Storm Shield... Uh, he's not carrying a bolt pistol anymore or any of those combi weapons that I had just mentioned. So he would just be the regular 25 points, which is what he normally is when you take him as a uh, regular Adeptus Astartes. Correct. Yeah. And like Blade Guard veterans too, because they don't have any of those weapons at all. So they stay the same. There are a lot of cases of models that have bolt pistols, but you can't, it's not a choice. Yeah. So you end up having to pay the tax, which is super annoying. But um, there's plenty of models that that don't have to take those. And it's nice that just a regular bolt gun, for instance, doesn't have a tax. So if you have a bolt gun, which is free, um, then you get special issue ammo. You're not paying extra for it. And uh, that's just a nice little little thing. Yeah, for sure. So now let's let's talk about how uh, the special issue ammunition, uh, like what different kinds of ammunition there are. So I'm just going to start from the top. Um, there are four different kinds. We're going to start here with the dragon fire bolt. So this is uh, add one to hit rolls for this weapon when targeting a model that is obscured. It's all yeah. right. It's all right. That's, uh, pro that's probably the one that I use the least. So the uh, second type of special issue ammo is the Hellfire round. This weapon always wounds on a two-up. That's yeah. amazing. You can have a bolt guns wounding anything on twos, storm bolters wounding anything on twos. Like th this mm -hmm. is immensely powerful. Yeah, really good against things that have um, bad saves, especially. Yeah, like if you're playing against Drakari or whatever, um, or like say like. Orc boys, like you said, yeah. Um, like a rack, this is probably the best thing to shoot against a rack. All right. So the uh, third kind of special issue ammo is Kraken bolt. Add three inches to the range of this weapon if it is a pistol, or six inches otherwise, and improve the AP of the attack by one. Example: an AP of zero becomes uh, minus one to a maximum of AP minus two. It's good against yeah, armor. That, that one's really good. <laughs> yeah. So your your rapid fire uh, one twenty four inch uh, twenty four inch gun becomes rapid fire one thirty inch, so you get two shots within fifteen inches, and on top of that you uh, you get AP one yeah whereas it's normally AP zero so that's really really good in my opinion it's like multifaceted like there's instances where you don't even care about the AP it's just really nice to have six inches extra range and. Um, there's instances where like if you're against like a model with a decent save then maybe you you want to uh get a little bit of ap in there with your with your bolt gun or whatever it is that you're using yeah so um next up we have the vengeance round uh this one subtracts three inches from the range of this weapon if it is a pistol or six inches otherwise and improves the ap of the attack by two Example, AP of 0 becomes AP minus 2 to a maximum AP of minus 3. Oh, yeah. I was just going to say, I like this one. Um, obviously, you're reducing the range of your weapon. So uh, for a 12-inch rapid fire, like 12-inch half range on a rapid fire, it becomes a 9-inch half range with 18-inch total range, kind of like a grav gun. Uh, but AP 2 is fantastic if you're within 9 inches and uh, you want to you want to get some AP in there. That's that's a really strong option. Yeah, absolutely. So special issue ammunition, um, it just makes your basic bolt weapons a lot more flexible. And um, that's what Death Watch has, I think, at least in terms of its weapons, is flexibility. It seems like they have something in their arsenal that gives them an answer to whatever models they can find themselves up against. So... And Oh, sorry. I was just going to say one more thing about the flexibility that you were talking about. Yeah. Um, it makes it really nice when you're building a command roster because sometimes when you're like making a command roster for like a Stardis, the fact that like they have flexibility in terms of all the options they have 
and you try to fit that flexibility onto a roster with like different models that do different things. Whereas with Deathwatch, the flexibility is in the models themselves, not the choices that you have. So it allows you to take things that can like deal with like fringe matchups because your main like I want I don't want to say chaff because they don't have chaff models, but like your main flex guys, they can flex against so many different types of opposition, and that's really useful. All right, so uh, I guess speaking of models, uh, we're not going to go through every single every single model that yeah. Deathwatch can take because we'll probably be here for like two hours. Um, so what I've asked Shane to do, him and I have sat down and we've thought of what our favorite models are to take in Deathwatch kill teams. Uh, considering all of the rules changes in the Pariah Nexus book, obviously. Shane, I'm just going to start off here. One of my three favorite uh, Death Watch models is the Black Shield with... St or the Yeah, Black Shield with Storm Shield and Lightning Claw or a Power Fist. I love the Black Shield. You, you pay a little bit extra for him as opposed to just a standard Death Watch veteran. But what that gets you is this model can... Uh, rerolled failed charge rolls for free which mm -hmm. as we've seen time and time again in kill team tournaments is a fantastic ability for models to have definitely yeah the, the black shield is fantastic he's um like i you were just talking about him with the storm shield and the power fist i mean that's just like a that's a that's a killer that guy right there yeah. um it's the one of the ways i've been using black shields myself is uh like he's only one point more than a normal Death Watch veteran, and he can take all of the same war gear as a Death Watch veteran. So if I have like a standard loadout that I'm going for across my list, he's just going to be, and I have like an extra point, I'll just make one of those Death Watch veterans a black shield, and all of a sudden it's just another veteran with an extra attack, and he can reroll charges. So that's just really, really nice. Unfortunately, yeah. you only get one though. Yeah, which is a shame, but I mean, yeah, it's whatever. Mm -hmm. Um. The, the Lightning Claw I like on him because of the, I guess, the, the new weapon change for Lightning Claw, where, um, what is it, you get like an extra, you get an extra attack with it, you don't need to have two, which I think is used to be the case, like you needed two Lightning Claws in order to get an extra attack, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, and then obviously, um, it's like AP2, one damage, but you're re-rolling the wounds. You know, you're already going to be re-rolling ones against whatever you set as your uh, mission tactic priority target to be so i mean it's good extra attack is good going up to four attacks with that weapon is great um the power fist i like a lot just because you know this this model has three attacks one of those is gonna go through right one of those has got to hit and mm -hmm. uh you might as well be punching with a power fist and they're yeah. now uh they're now ap3 flat two damage so a lot more consistency. And speaking of the consistency on the power fist, it's against most things you're wounding on twos, and then you get that reroll one from the mission tactics. So it's like exactly that yeah. thing's that thing's hidden. So one of my very favorite uh, ones that I've been running is the Death Watch veteran, just the basic veteran, and this can be a black shield or it can be a watch sergeant or anything on that data sheet other than the gunner, with a storm bolter and lightning claw. So this is just like an amazing flex unit. So I mentioned earlier that models that already have that Death Watch faction keyword, they don't have to pay that tax that um, is talked about in the Aquila Kill Team section, which I believe is on page 62 in the Prime Nexus book. This means that they can get a Storm Bolter with special issue ammo that is normally six points, but they get it for two points, the cost of a normal Storm Bolter. And on top of that, they get a lightning claw for one CP or for one point, and they've got a storm bolter with all those different special issue ammo profiles, which is super flexible. And they've got a lightning claw, so they've got three attacks base. Um, they're rerolling all their wounds. It's AP two. It's a lightning claw is basically good against anything, and you just have a very flexible model. He's got two wounds, and he's only eighteen points for for all this stuff. Um, add one point and that's a black shield or a watch sergeant and it's just fantastic and what's really nice is um say if you're against marines and the flexibility from the storm bolter just isn't enough in your eyes to push through 
Uh, for Death Watch, the combi grav is the same cost as a storm bolter. It's only two points. So you can just swap a storm bolter for a combi grav, and there you go. You've got your marine killer. It's the same cost. It's not interrupting your list at all. You don't have to like rebuild uh, the way the list works out. And it's just it's super convenient. And these have been like my bread and butter like like go to models to fill out lists. Uh, next up for me, I have got the uh, Watch Sergeant with Xenophase Blade and Storm Shield as a combat specialist. This model, I hardly ever took the Watch Sergeant uh, prior to Pariah Nexus, just because yeah, I hardly ever saw a reason to use the Xenophase Blade. Uh, but now, uh, after the, the changes to the Xenophase Blade, it's now a Strength plus 1, AP 4, 1 damage weapon. However, it ignores invulnerable saves. I'll say that again. It ignores invulnerable saves. Yeah. So, the new Space Marine Blade Guard veterans with their Storm Shields and 3 wounds up against this model with 4 attacks with the Xenophase Blade are in shambles. Nothing is nothing is safe from this model. It only does one damage, but if you get enough attacks through, a your I mean it's AP4 ignores invulnerable saves. Like it can't like this is like the strongest like one of the strongest weapons in the game right now, I think. Honestly. Yeah, it's it's really good. I mean, it, against things like um I mean, I mentioned Drakari earlier, but Drakari are like they have so many invuln saves. Yeah, uh, just across the board, especially on one wound models, um, thousand suns. I mean, those those are two factions right there that just hate having to play against this. Yeah, another faction that I was thinking, taking a look at this model, that would really be an auto take. I think. I mean, I think this model is an auto take. Period. But uh, this thing will eat tau drones. Oh yeah, that strength <laughs> five. So you're going to be wounding on a three. You're going against tau so just choose drones to be your priority target so you're getting the reroll ones to wound uh ap4 that cuts that cuts right through their armor no problem it ignores the invulnerable saves of things like the shield drones yeah. so i would just put this guy in like the middle of the battlefield on like a center objective or something and hey if those tau shield drones want to come and contest this and try to lock me up they're going to be surprised yeah uh, that is a, it's a really strong model because it's like, think about it this way. Either they have an invuln save and you're invalidating part of their points cost, or they don't have an invuln save and you have AP minus four. So yeah. it doesn't matter. <laughs> yep, exactly. It, it, it really is pretty good against everything. I mean, it's only one damage, but, um, still, I mean, four attacks, if you make him a combat spec, like you said, yeah, that's that's a really good model. And what else did you give him? Was it just the Xenophase Blade? I gave him the Storm Shield. Yeah. Um, the, the Storm Shield, we haven't mentioned it here, but it's yeah, you probably heard it somewhere when we were talking about it. Uh, Storm Shields now give a four-up invulnerable save and a plus one to your normal save. So this guy's got a two-up armor save with a four-up invuln with two wounds. He's a tank, and he's a beast who can dish it out real strong guy he's a little pricey but hey i mean he does he does the job against just about everything <laughs> it's really good against necrons too ap yeah. minus four strength five that's that's great one yeah. damage all right so uh do you have a do you have another favorite model yeah there was one i wanted to talk about that i've uh, i've been having a lot of fun with um also a combat spec so you're not running this guy in the same list as the guy that you just mentioned um unless you make that guy not a combat spec but I really like the Terminator Gunner with uh, Heavy Flamer and Power Fist and running him as a combat spec. Um, with the some of those cheaper models I was talking about earlier, the, the Death Watch Veterans, where they're just super flexible with the Storm Bolts or Lightning Glaw, um, you can run like four of those guys, uh, like a 15-point leader, and this Terminator Gunner in like a six-model list. And like you can deep strike him, and he's got a 12-inch heavy flamer that's strength 5, AP 1. And if they get close to him, he's got a power fist with three attacks. So, I mean, this guy just, he's just like a raid boss. He just drops in. He's got three wounds, five up in vuln, two up save, 12-inch flamer. 
he's uh he's threatening like everywhere basically yeah and um he's only like the and it kind of goes back to what i was talking about earlier with the points costs really being convenient um on a 125 point list if you drop two of those storm bolter lightning claw guys that's one point more than this model costs so you drop those two you just add this guy clean and that's your list and it's just one less model so super convenient and terminators you know terminators are cool three wounds now yeah on an open board would you typically try to deep strike that model in yeah i don't know if i mentioned that but that would be the plan every game would be to deep strike him just because of teleports great okay yeah. every time i run him he's uh he's deep striking and okay just i mean 12 inch flamer on a deep strike it's like really hard even if you screen it out oh yeah that's probably, true he'll get to hit you with something yeah there's nothing you can really do there except yeah. have a bubble of just area denial yeah it's hard to kill him too so unless yeah. you've got like a ready melta pointing at his face um which he probably won't want to drop in front of <laughs> yeah it's then, easy uh, to just not drop in front of one of those guys yeah it, it is quite easy to do that so yeah, yeah I, I would very much encourage uh listeners to try this model out because i think he is uh I think he's really good all right so i've got a uh i've got a third favorite model this one is a uh, death watch veteran gunner as a heavy specialist with the new and improved infernus heavy bolter uh the infernus heavy bolters heavy bolter profile is 36 inch range strength 5 ap1 now two damage yeah heavy three heavy two. three yeah uh, and then the uh, the flamer part of the profile is 12 inches, heavy D6, strength 5, AP1, 1 damage. It's just great. It's just great yeah. now. Um, they have the uh, the 1 CP Hellfire Shell tactic. Uh, you just make a single shooting attack with it, and if it hits, it does D3 mortal wounds, which is pretty crazy for mm -hmm. 1 CP. I know that uh, Beernit had a video like a, a few years ago, it must have been at this point, talking about this engine of uh, either buffing this model up with like a comm specialist or making it a, uh, a sniper specialist. So that way it's basically like auto-hitting D3 mortal wounds, which is, uh, yeah, I mean, that's insane. Um, yeah, I was going to say the cost of the Infernus Heavy Bolter, it just blows my mind. Because it's two points. It's two points. This is a weapon that has a heavy bolter and a heavy flamer. So for context, the Death Watch Veteran Gunner can take a heavy bolter for six points, or they could take a heavy flamer for five points, or they could take an Infernus Heavy Bolter, which has both of those weapons, not like downgraded versions of those weapons. It just has them both for two points. So that's like 11 points worth of war gear on a single weapon that costs two points it's like so crazy that like it makes me think that it's like a mistake from gw but there was nothing in the errata so no. yeah uh, that is just crazy yeah really uh really funny how that worked out <laughs> um <laughs> one thing i like to mention about the veteran gunner is um the what used to be big that everybody feared from death watch was uh frag cannon spam right the four frag cannon gunners mm -hmm. uh that weapon has taken a pretty big hit instead of having the uh the auto hit profile like the frag shell or whatever um instead of it being 2d6 it is now 2d3 i think it's still strength 6 ap1 1 damage but uh yeah that that weapon has taken a hit and it's still at the same points cost of five points um because it's an assault weapon and it has like the like the shell profile and the fragmentation profile i i think there's still a place for it but uh, like the how like why would you take that when you can take this yeah i mean really you're just taking it for the the ap2 two damage like if yeah. you really need the extra one ap but even then it's like i don't know because yeah. you have less range. And I guess it is an assault weapon, but you have less yeah. range. It is strength 7 instead of strength 5, but it, I feel like it needs to be strength 8 to be worth taking over the Heavy Flamer, or the Infernus Heavy Bolter. To, to make it worth it, yeah. Yeah, so do you have any other favorite models before we move on? Uh, I will say my favorite model to run 
as um as a leader in most of my death watch lists has been the weirdly enough the assault intercessor sergeant hmm. um he is actually aside from the watch sergeant who you'll typically use as just like a slightly better death watch veteran um the assault intercessor sergeant is the cheapest leader that uh death watch can take at just 16 points um i like to run him with just the chain sword and a hand flamer basically if if somebody gets near him he can uh he can threaten both uh in range and in melee with four attacks um I like leaders that basically are, are, are relatively effective at saying, like, get away from me. <laughs> and this guy does that pretty well while being a cheap leader that you don't have to sink a lot of points into. Uh, we didn't talk about it, but there is the heavy thunder hammer. Instead of being, uh, like, D6 damage, it's now a flat 4 damage, I believe. Uh, the regular thunder hammer is... Um, they made it worse. Uh, first of all, the heavy thunder hammer is it's only like five points right the thunder hammer that astartes all astartes can take is eight points strength times two ap2 flat three damage and you're subtracting one from the hit roll but the death watch heavy thunder hammer is three less points five points strength times two ap3 four damage subtracting one from the hit roll so basically um there's no reason to ever take the the regular thunder hammer because it's just it's got it's got better AP, it's got one more damage, and it costs three points less. The only reason you would take a thunder hammer, um, over the heavy thunder hammer is if you just really wanted a, like a storm shield with the heavy or with the thunder hammer, but I mean it's at that point you're talking about like, how many points? It's twenty eight points. Um, I, I don't think you're gonna be running that. Just so you can have a, a weaker version of the thunder, the heavy thunder hammer. Yeah, is there ever an instance where you could see yourself running the heavy thunder hammer? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, twenty points is, I mean, that's a really good cost for a weapon like that. I mean, compare it to it's basically a power fist. Um, it is one point more than the power fist, but I mean, AP minus, uh, AP minus three four damage i mean four damage is absolutely insane yeah that'll um, that'll it'll bonk anything out of existence yeah. unless um, it's maybe, a mech I mean, run yeah if you're playing against like i don't know like custodies or something that could be really good uh something with more than two yeah. wounds i mean this will just cut right through it uh ultimately pretty strong weapon yeah um, I don't think there were any other like Death Watch specific weapons changes that we haven't covered yet, but um if we missed any, I'll let us know in the in the comments below. Alright. Yeah, please do. I think I mean, is the Stalker pattern bolt gun exclusive to Death Watch? Uh yes, it is. Okay. Well there's that. It's thirty inch range, heavy two, strength four, AP one, one damage. I wouldn't take this just because it's only one point less than an Infernus Heavy Bolter or a Storm Bolter, which I both think are better. Yeah. Um, you're pretty much tied to running it as a heavy spec just because of the heavy two. Uh, and it has less shots than the Storm Bolter. Yeah, it's not uh, a huge <laughs> Yeah, no, me neither. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead now and dive into their tactics. So um, I'll just start us off. So first up is Hellfire Shell. Uh, so it's 1 CP. Use this tactic when you choose a model in your kill team to shoot with a Heavy Bolter or the Heavy Bolter profile of an Infernus Heavy Bolter. You can only make a single hit roll with, this, with the weapon this phase, subtracting one as normal if also firing an Infernus Heavy Bolter's Heavy Flamer. However, if it hits, the target suffers D3 mortal wounds instead of the normal damage. Yeah, I mean, you, you use this and you also get the Heavy Flamer, which, um, I mean, Heavy Flamer's 12 inches, you might be... Yeah, like in the inches. normal in the normal shooting phase, this is good. Definitely, yeah. Um, what's nice is, I mean, you pair it, like like you said earlier, um, the Infernus engine, you can pair it with, like, a comms Auspex guy, and, like, you're hitting on a 2... And if it's a sniper, you might be rerolling ones. Um, yeah, I mean that's 
and then it's it's almost like a like a psychic like a cybolt basically yeah i i could see myself like using this once per turn like yeah i mean with... and some it is interesting because against certain things now that the heavy bolter is two damage you might just be better off just shooting the heavy bolter rather than doing hellfire shells um, right right against certain things but if you're against something like that's maybe got a good armor save or you don't ex or maybe it's got a lot of wounds uh then yeah hellfire shells is definitely yeah a pretty pretty good way to go i think yeah um and astartes have hellfire shells as well but it's two cp for them for what yep. it's worth i mean this faction doesn't get death denied so i guess that's fair yeah. um, <laughs> all right do you want to take the next one uh yeah i like this one uh rival chapters uh, use this tactic when a model from your kill team is chosen to attack in the shooting or fight phase whilst there is another model from your kill team within two inches of it until the end of the phase reroll hit rolls of one for both models so they basically both become sniper specs for one cp um or if it's the fight phase i mean even there they get to reroll ones uh this is pretty nice especially if you've got two guys with storm bolters right next to each other i mean that's eight shots rerolling ones Oh, um, man, that's really good. Yeah, that's value right there. And then on top of that, you know, going against the uh, priority targets, you're going to be re-rolling those, those wound rolls of one as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I like yeah. that tactic for one CP. Yeah, pretty good value. Here we have, we have the beheading for uh, two command points. Use this tactic at the start of the fight phase. Until the end of the phase, you may re-roll hit rolls for any attacks that target an enemy leader. I don't uh i don't know how often you have been in combat with an enemy's leader model shane um not, not <laughs> i have not found myself there often yeah and for uh, uh for 2cp the the combat models that death watch have i think are good enough for the most part that you don't need to be re-rolling all of your hit rolls right yeah. 2cp is is a lot um yeah i think this is a case of diminished return on investment definitely and on top of that it's like i mean think about what the leader usually is for most teams it's like a weaker guy like you probably don't need two cp tactics to kill like the grot leader or like the night fiend leader or something like it's just it's a lot <laughs> yeah for for something that i don't think is i just don't think this almost ever comes up into like good value really yeah all right so moving on you want to take the next one yeah this one's really good uh only in death does duty end this is two command points uh use this tactic when a model from your kill team is taken out of action that model summons the strength for one final attack and can immediately shoot either shoot as if it were your turn in the shooting phase or fight as if it were your turn in the fight phase so two cp um they don't have death denied but they do have this and this is a uh, this is a really powerful one for quite a few reasons. Um, Ryan, I know you're a fan of this one. Oh yeah, uh, for a while I was just banking my CP with the expectation that one of my one wound death watch would die, but when he did, I would ensure that he would go out in a blaze of glory or just whiff and i would just feel like i wasted two cp but yeah no this is great it's super flexible it's not just like you get a shooting attack or a attack in combat you get your full amount of attacks for whatever you want to do it's uh it's it's great i mean my favorite part about this is nothing in the text of this stratagem suggests that you can't use it on a model that has already shot or already fought correct you are absolutely correct so really it's like having an extra activation if the model dies so like like if you advance like a flamer or something or like say i deep strike like that like a guy with a flamer in front of a bunch of uh enemy models and they kill him uh whether or not he's shot already you could spend two cp and, and shoot again so it's like no matter what that model is going to get to do what you put him there to do and uh there's a lot of value in that i think and when you've got such an elite team, which Death Watch are usually going to have, you need to make sure that your models are doing what they're supposed to do. Yeah, and this is uh, this is huge for that, especially if you're playing with like three CPU in like certain tournament packets. Um, 
then it's like super super good in my opinion here we have tactical disengagement for one cp use this tactic in the movement phase when a model in your kill team retreats that model may retreat up to six inches rather than up to three inches and may fire its weapons in the shooting phase of this battle round even though it retreated i've gotten burned by this tactic a lot uh because there's been multiple times where i've been playing and i've used this tactic and i've retreated the full six inches and then guess what happens another enemy model charges the same model and you can't you can't <laughs> retreat with him twice yeah and then he just yeah, gets locked up and you just feel like a fool um, yeah because it does say you can shoot its weapons in the shooting phase but you can't overwatch after you've retreated once yeah so this is definitely a situational one. Um, and if you're doing it, you need to make sure that you're using those six inches to get it into a spot that one, that's going to be useful in the shooting phase. And two, you're not going to get charged again in the movement phase for the rest of you know your opponent's movement. Yeah. Uh, if you can find that sweet spot, then that's absolutely worth the one CP, but you just got to be careful with it. I feel like if you're building a Death Watch roster... A lot of what we've talked about here today is skewing list building towards heavy and furnace bolter and combi bolter or storm storm bolter, I should say, uh, wielding models. And with both of those, uh, you should just shoot the Overwatch. I think mm -hmm. you're getting four shots from the um, with special issue ammunition from the storm bolters. You're getting. Uh, D6 auto hitting shots from the heavy and furnace bolter with the three like heavy shots from the heavy bolter profile itself. Um, so I I feel like this tactic could fade into obscurity. Yeah, I mean the the usage comes if you're on open board and you're getting charged like out of line of sight, for instance, and right. you don't have the option to Overwatch. And then you can just get out of dodge. Uh, set yourself up to to at least be safe and and if you're lucky maybe you'll get some shots off because i mean six inch retreat that can make it so that like there is no charge like if they're charging basically like seven inches away then you can make it almost impossible yeah yeah i guess it's just super situational and you just gotta like know when to use it and just be mindful just have good spatial awareness uh, decapitation doctrine is next um, this is one CP use this tactic when a model from your kill team is chosen to attack in the shooting or fight phase until the end of the phase reroll failed wound rolls for that model that target an enemy leader um, this is kind of like the beheading but it's only one CP and you can use it in the shooting phase as well uh, I mean this is kind of nice right like yeah like you've got really long range guns all over your most of your lists so if you can like get like one like snipe with like a heavy bolter or like maybe like 30 inch profile of a storm bolter um re-rolling all the failed wound rolls can be super good for only a cp i mean yeah that's uh that's some value there and definitely better than the beheading oh absolutely yeah if you're ever in a situation where you're thinking about using the beheading it's probably just better to use decapitation doctrine unless you've got like a lightning claw and you're already re-rolling the wounds but yeah of course yeah, yeah. even with the re-rolling one uh re-rolling wound rolls of one i think you're gonna get value out of it mm -hmm. next up we have this is probably one of my favorite tactics just because of the name death to the alien uh, exclamation use, point yeah I, that's why i said it the way i did because there's because <laughs> there's punctuation on this one i'm not sure if there's punctuation on any other uh tactic in this in this game uh use this tactic when you choose a model in your kill team to fight in the fight phase each time you make a hit roll of five up for that model during this phase that model can if it was targeting a model that does not have the imperium chaos or unaligned keyword immediately make an additional attack against the same model using the same weapon these extra attacks cannot themselves generate any further attacks and this is for one command point yeah i mean that's decent um it's something it's only one cp uh i mean i think it's okay um would like you regular... ever would you ever spend the one cp to use it i mean 
I'm trying to think. Like maybe it's it's a tough call because there's a couple other stratagems where if I just want that little extra like oomph to kill something, I'll probably use one of these other ones. Like for instance, if I'm if I'm if the, I have the option to use rival chapters instead, I'll probably use that. Like if there's another model within two inches of friendly model, I'd probably rather get the reroll ones than death to the alien. But I don't know. I mean, it's not bad. I feel like considering it only works against Xenos, I feel like it should be better than it is. I would I would like to use it maybe with like a lightning claw or like the Xenoface blade or something maybe. I can see the Xenoface blade being pretty good actually. Yeah, because like in my mind, the uh, Watch Sergeant with the Xenoface blade, he's kind of just like on an adventure by himself. <laughs> Not really. He doesn't really need to be buffed by anybody. He's just this beat stick model that goes out and kills. So I guess anything to give him more attacks is going to be a good thing, especially because it's a one damage weapon. Uh, Armor of Contempt, I guess, is the next one, Shane. Yeah, uh, this is one CP that we've seen this one before. Um, use this tactic when a model from your kill team suffers a mortal wound. Roll a d6 for that mortal wound and each other mortal wound inflicted on this model for the rest of the phase. On a 5-up, that mortal wound is ignored and has no effect. Uh, yeah, pretty much most Imperium Marines. I think all Imperium Marines have this. Like, Grey Knights have it. Um, Astartes have it. Uh... Not Imperium, but Orcs have it. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. Dead Ard. Yeah. Uh, it's just, yeah. This is like a nice thing. Uh, it's li- You're going to use it less than you maybe used to just because you've got two wounds now. So, I mean, the main thing for this is like Cybolt, right? Yeah. Like before, if I was playing against Grey Knights, I could see myself wanting to use this. Uh, these days where every single one of my death watch models has at least two wounds, I'm not, I'm not really, uh, not really feeling this tactic. I would say like, if there's a situation where you think like where your gray knight opponent is forced to put both their cybolts into one model, then using this is good because you get two chances at the five up. But outside of that, I would avoid it. Uh, we have priority execution. Use this tactic when you choose a model in your kill team to fight in the fight phase. Add one to all wound rolls for that model until the end of the phase. Uh, and it I is for it. one command point. I love it. Yeah. Give it to me. Yep. <laughs> That's my favorite one in the fight phase. This is, uh, this would be like my go-to if I want to spend one CP. And like the reason why I wouldn't usually look at Death to the Alien. Um, I think I even like this more than Rival Chapters, to be honest, uh, as far as the fight phase go. Like, your your Xeno phase blade is wounding on twos against Marines now. And then it fits against your uh, mission tactic priority target. You're going to be rerolling the one anyway, so now you're just yeah. auto-wounding, essentially. Yeah, or the Lightning Claw, wounding on yeah. threes, rerolling failed. I mean, that's just crazy. Yeah. We've got Teleport Strike. I think everybody knows what that does. Yep. Terminator Deep Strike. 1 CP. Really yeah. good. Yeah. Very useful. Uh, uh, tactical Priority for 1 CP. Uh, this one's really nice, actually, uh, when it comes up, when when you can find the use for it. So this is 1 CP. Uh, use this tactic at the start of any battle round after the first. When you do choose a data sheet, that data sheet is now your kill team's priority target as described in mission tactics rather than the data sheet you chose previously. So if you killed all the th- or most of the things that yeah. were on your initial mission tactics, you can switch it up for a CP. Pretty nice. Um, I've never gotten the chance to really use it myself, but I, uh, I am, I'm a fan. I will say, like, if you're in a position to use this tactic, you're probably already winning the game. Like, if you ever find yourself in a problem, like, with a problem, like, dang, I killed all the things for my mission tactic. <laughs> I guess I'll have to use this. It's like, that's not really a problem. <laughs> no, no. Uh, I believe this is the last tactic. We have got Unrelenting. Uh, use this tactic in the shooting phase when you choose a model from your kill team to shoot. When rolling to hit for this model's shooting attacks, it is considered not to have moved in the previous movement phase. And it is uh, for uh, 1 CP. Uh, Yeah, it's it's okay. 
yeah i like it for the um the heavy bolter profile of the uh infernus heavy bolter you know if it's not a heavy spec you can still yeah move and uh take a shot you just can't advance because then you can't choose him to shoot period yeah. but uh it, it is definitely i mean it has its uses if you want to avoid the the penalty for shooting or uh anything like that really uh so yeah those are all of the uh the 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 basic i guess we'll call them tactics for the death watch uh, one thing that we accidentally skipped, Shane, was I wanted us to talk about all of the new uh, Primaris models that came out with the uh, like all the that all the ones that got new rules in Kill Team with the Pariah Nexus box. So the Assault Intercessors, the uh, the Blade Guard veterans, uh, and the uh, the Heavy Intercessors, and talk about where we think that those models would fit into a death watch command roster so mm -hmm. obviously we talked about the assault intercessor sergeant with flamer and chainsword being like the most i guess cost effective uh leader model for death watch but uh what do you think of the uh of the new models yeah um like you said assault intercessor sarge really good leader I mean, heavy intercessors, I mean, they don't benefit from special issue ammo. That would be crazy if they did. Yeah, I um, double-checked today. I was like, ooh, one of their weapons can become Assault 4, or not Assault 4, AP 4. But then I looked at the I looked at the, uh, the special issue ammunition table, and I was like, oh, it can only get to a max of AP 3. And then I read the weapons again and realized it can't even, it can't even get <laughs> special issue ammunition at all. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't think I would ever really run a Heavy Intercessor on a uh, on a Death Watch team. I mean, the, the Death Watch veteran gunners are, like, they have really good long-range shooting that they don't, for, for cheaper than the Heavy Intercessor gunners um, that are bringing similar weapons. So, I, I don't think I would ever really bother with them. Uh, I will say, like, the Blade Guard veterans, those... Those are really strong models. I can definitely see them having a place in a uh, in a Death Watch roster, um, but that's more not because they fit, but more because of I mean that's just such a strong model. How do you say no to it, right? Yeah, and I I like the Blade Guard veterans better in Death Watch than I do in regular Adeptus Astartes because oh. um, I mean they they are more expensive. But this is a three wound model on a team that does not have death denied. So I think it's I think it's I think it's better. You get more value out of those three wounds with Death Watch than you do in uh in regular Astartes. Because regular Astartes, I'm just gonna try to death deny you every turn. Yeah, I mean that's that's a really good point. Is honestly. that a, is I mean, that a fair take? Do you think? Because it's like thirty five points for the sergeant, and I'm like, that's a lot to sink in <laughs> to a single model. I just mean oh, like sorry. overall, like sticking them into a Death Watch roster, oh, yeah. where like you're adding up all like Death Watch is going to be fielding usually less mo less models than Space Marines. So that's um, the that's the why I'm kind of on the fence about this model, but. Now I'm saying it. Yeah. I don't even know if that's true because, like, with Adeptus Astartes, I'm going to be taking Storm Shields on everybody I can. Yeah, like, I've actually found it's easier to get seven models with Death Watch than with the Astartes, just because, like, the Death Watch veteran, um, that model is 15 points, whereas a company veteran for Astartes is 16. Um, and, like, they can get good things for cheaper, like a two point Storm Bolter. Like, no Astartes model is getting a weapon, a ranged weapon, that strong for two points. Yeah. So having those, like, quote-unquote cheap options, um, that's, I mean, that's really nice. Just because it, it lets you hit seven bodies easier. And even better, it makes the six model lists really strong. Like, the six model list for me has a Terminator or a Blade Guard veteran. And that's just, like like crazy strong yeah but oh. yeah i think there's there's definitely a lot of value to what you're saying though about like durability means more to a team that doesn't have access to something like death denied for sure 
regular assault intercessors uh it sounds like they're not making the cut here aside from the sergeant yeah not really yeah because uh. you can't i mean you can't really do anything with them other than what they can already take which is just the heavy bolt pistol and the chain sword and those are pretty lackluster compared to the company vet with a lightning claw and storm bolter that you mentioned I mean, yeah actually like an assault intercessor like a basic one is completely useless to death watch because the only thing that an assault intercessor has going for it with astartes is that it's 15 points which is cheaper than the veterans for astartes but it's the same cost as the veterans for death watch so a 15 point assault intercessor compared to a 15 point death watch veteran the Death Watch veteran gets a bolt gun with special issue ammo, whereas the Assault Intercessor gets a um, bolt pistol, a heavy bolt pistol, I think, yep. with special issue ammo, and they both get a chain sword. They're both 15 points. Um, they have the same amount of attacks, but the veteran has uh, uh, higher leadership. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. I guess before we close it out here, we've been talking about how powerful this faction has become uh take us down to earth a little bit here uh what are some weaknesses you think that uh that other factions can exploit when they find themselves uh in the kill zone with death watch uh i mean similar weaknesses to astartes in the sense that plasma is pretty rough against them um or just consistent like higher than strength four shooting with AP2 or higher. Uh, they hate that. Uh, grav guns. Really oh, yeah. good against them. Mm -hmm. um, plasma, obviously. And, um, I mean, unlike Astartes, I mean, they don't have, they don't have Death Denied. I mean, we've said it like 50 times, but <laughs> yeah. Death Denied is a, big, is a big deal for Astartes. And not having access to it, um, and instead having access to only in Death to Studi End, it's not necessarily like a straight like negative, but you need to change the way that you play the, the team um, and the yeah. way that you approach situations if you really want to get your 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 money's worth out of these guys. Space Marines, to me, they seem a lot more cagey and a lot more defensive. Um, with Death Watch, it feels like you've got your long-range shooters with your gunners, and then you've got basically just your melee beat sticks that you just send forward and if they die they die but like you have to they have to like be aggressive they have to be the aggressors in basically all of their matchups yeah yeah i'd agree with that they uh they very much they have a lot of offensive output and you got to make sure you're playing to that as much as possible um i would say know exactly when you want your death watch veterans to have storm bolters and when exactly you want them to have combi graphs because they're the same cost um so you don't have to worry about switching your lists up it's just you know plugging the models right in right uh, and playing them in the appropriate situations um like a storm bolter you know the storm bolter with that what's it called the vengeance rounds with the ap2 yeah that can threaten a marine but you don't want to only take storm bolters and then like have that instead of a grav gun against Marines. It's more like, you know, you have an option for, for teams with different profiles with the storm bolter. Yeah. Uh, so you got to adapt a little bit with them, man. You can't play them as if they're Astartes cause they're not. Yeah, for sure. And I'm happy that they have their own identity despite sharing like literally the same model range they definitely have an identity for sure yeah uh all right so i guess that wraps it up for this episode of the command point podcast thank you all for joining in and listening to our death watch deep dive we hope you guys enjoyed it if you did enjoy it uh follow us on itunes or whatever you're listening to uh if you're listening uh, to us on youtube go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any kill team content and if you want to further support us you really like what we're doing feel free to head on over to our patreon for uh for some extra goodies that we've got going on over there for you guys so 
Thank you all for listening once again, and we will see you all again in the next one.